I hail from St. Petersburg, not the one in Florida, but rather in Russia. Basically hail from an academic family. Judging by my age, you can clearly see that I was born in the Soviet Union. So the family had impeccable anti-communist credentials. From the very beginning, from when I was a little boy, I was interested in history, humanities, this sort of thing. I decided to do Middle Eastern studies and I went to St. Petersburg University uh, where I read Afghan and Iranian history and languages. Um, after graduation, I was in the army, um, and then I decided to move on to Oxford. Then for a while, I did some research and teaching in the UK, and then I decided it's much more interesting to make history rather than write and study history. That's why I joined the United Nations. And the United Nations is the best travel agent in the world. They take you to exotic places and they even pay you for going there. So you, you travel the world, you visit some pretty exotic countries and you try to change them for better. Very often you fail in doing that. I worked in Sudan uh, for two missions. I was in charge, basically, uh, running the department called Joint Mission Analysis Center. The year was 2017, and I realized that having rusticated for quite a while, being in the field, even the deep field, I want to go back to the joys of more sort of intellectual life. At that time, the sort of uh, NATO-led coalition uh, was still in Afghanistan. Uh, there were still um, some hopes that there might be a better future for Afghanistan. I said, OK, well, let's have a proper academic conference in St. Petersburg. And then on the margins of this conference, I proposed that we establish this association. So fortunately, people were pretty sympathetic towards this proposal. So the association was formed, the International Scholarly Association for the Study of Afghanistan. And I was elected its first president, then I was re-elected in 2021. I'm retired from the UN now, so I was looking for a good environment to relaunch or continue whatever you choose my academic studies. And going abroad for a short while is basically a very good sort of launching part uh, for, for doing serious academic study. And then I looked at the map and said, well, where should I go? And then I asked, yes, Hungary is a very interesting country, sort of politically and culturally, because it has the courage to very often go against the tide. And a country which is not ashamed of its own sort of Hungarian and European legacy and heritage. And realized that MCC is actually offering this visiting fellowships and so I decided to apply for this institution because it clearly states its mission. Apart from being an academic institution and doing an independent pursuit of knowledge, it also has a larger agenda, that of promoting sort of conservative values which I like so I decided, yes, that might be a good place for me. I was fortunate enough to uh, give enough uh, doing what they call here lunch talk, where I shared the results of my research. Then I also had a chance of taking part in an expert capacity in a student conference here at MCC. It was an international conference. And the quality of the questions was amazing. I would have expected them that they would either ask no questions whatsoever or go for some general ones, simply out of politeness and taking pity of me. On the contrary, the questions were very precise, specific, pointed, which clearly demonstrates that uh, they were able to grasp not just the complex ideas I was talking about, but also the realities 
of this very foreign land I referred to. What MCC does for me, it provides a great sort of intellectually stimulating environment that helps me to sharpen my mind, to better articulate the argument. Um, and the intellectual exchange I have with people at the MCC is really sort of stimulating.